Hi guys, welcome to this session. Um, I'm going to be returning to a series that I think I ran probably early last year, um, looking at a Waterhouse copy, so the um, pretty well-known 19th century British uh, sort of pre-Raphaelite painter, um, John Waterhouse. Um, and this was a copy of one of his um, more famous figure paintings. And we sort of developed that piece over, I think, about six sessions, um, up to about this sort of level. So I've, I'm kind of zoomed in. You can see relative to my hand how large the painting is. Um, and I sort of left it there just because we'd spent quite a lot of time with it and I wanted to move on to a new project. But I thought it would be nice to come back and revisit this piece and just kind of carry on pushing it a bit over the next few sessions, um, just to show sort of how you can refine something. We didn't work to a very kind of small level of detail with this piece when we first went over it. So all the forms were kind of nicely blocked in. We got some tones, but we didn't really develop it um, completely. So what I want to do over the next few sessions is just look at how we could push something like this forward. Um, so I'm going to be using a smaller set of brushes, um, mostly sort of small synthetics. Um, you can see sort of relative to the, the painting size. They're about sort of a range of maybe one mil to two mil uh, rounds and then a sort of two or three mil flat. Uh, the palette I'm going to be using is titanium white. Um, I'll sort of pop that up here as well, so titanium white, um, cadmium yellow, yellow ochre, um, some burnt umber, cad red, alizarin crimson, ultramarine blue and black. So a fairly comprehensive palette, this one. Some, sometimes I do kind of simpler palettes. And I'm going to be using a medium, which is a mixture of linseed oil and mineral spirits, about a half and half mixture or so. Um, so yeah, let's let's get going with this. One thing I'm going to do, so sometimes when we, we're working at detail, we do something called couching. So I'm going to take some of my medium, and I'm going to be working kind of generally in this sort of area today, so mostly over the face. And I'm partly going to do this to resaturate the surface. I'm putting some medium over it, so just picked up a little bit of medium with this brush and I'm just spreading it over the area that I want to work. So this does two things. One is that it resaturates the painting, so you can see that's kind of adjusted how dark um, the darker tones are. You always want to make sure if you've got sinking in, so sinking in was where that had gone a bit faded out when it dried, um, that you, you oil back in when you work over the top of it. Otherwise there's a risk you'll get end up with sort of patchiness later. Um, once you actually varnish if you haven't um, oiled in when you're working through things. So one reason for doing that is to resaturate it. I'm going to take a little bit more. And another one is to create a kind of softer surface to blend into. So it's a little bit like a wet in wet technique um, that you might use with um, watercolour, if you've got any experience with watercolour. So there we go. Um, so it's just a little bit smoother to paint over. <coughs> The reference, I've got a link in the, um, the description if you want to go back to the reference. And so my main sort of concern is to try to get in and just start developing some more of these kind of more finer forms in the face. So I'm starting, I'm just mixing up a little bit using yellow and red and white kind of lighter flesh tone colour, just for the top of this cheek. Working quite thinly. I'm trying to get about the right balance between sort of pinkishness and yellowishness. Yeah. mix up a slightly darker tone so I want, I'm going to make it sort of turn towards the, the shadows that's those forms going kind of left left of that tone 
As we go into the half tones, I'm going to shift a little bit cooler, a little bit grayer. Um, and one thing I wanted to look at actually is this the sort of sense of coolness in the original, if you have a look at the original that I've posted. Um, these, these sort of bluer tones, which I, I think I didn't quite capture, and how they sort of contrast against those warmer, pinker tones uh, around her cheek. So anywhere in this face that I see those same colours, once they're mixed up, I want to lay in, lay them in. And it doesn't matter if it's sort of like a patchier application initially, my main concern is just to try to get these, these tones correct and not worry too much about how it's actually painted in. The other thing to bear in mind is we've always got this sort of underpainting, which we're fairly happy with, so it's, that's why it's important to develop that. So I can always kind of, if I'm not happy with something at the end of the session, I can sort of rub it back. Um, it's also going to go kind of moderately transparent as well once it dries. So a little bit of that underpainting is going to show through subsequently or later. It's probably slightly too bluish. I want to go for a kind of more greenish look. So I'm going to mix a little bit of the yellow ochre into black for that. Maybe a touch of the burnt umber as well. then sort of softly blending them into those those tones that were there already or that I initially painted in.
I'm just making these kind of tweaks back and forth just to try to get the right play between cooler colours, so colours that kind of feel more bluish, greenish, warmer colours. So those forms are getting a lot better, but possibly it's shifted a little bit to greyish now. So I'm just going to try to reintroduce some stronger, more saturated tones. So using white, at the moment white and some cadmium red mixed together for these pinkish cheeks. And then blending just back in the sort of the opposite direction. trying to work my way in towards this eye so if I can get get in and get that eye left eye sorted I'll be fairly happy by the end of this session but I want to work around get these these colors these tones sorted before I jump into that area I don't want to quite get into the um, the neck behind the face today, but I do sort of kind of force to work into it a little bit just um, in order to kind of work up to the uh, the jaw. It's hard to to work on it otherwise. So sometimes you have to do that. You sort of have to work on surrounding areas even if they're not your focus. But try not to kind of spread. Don't get kind of dragged into doing too much in those surrounding areas if you've got a, a focal point. So when you're rendering like this, you want to try to stay sort of on on target with it. It's very easy with paintings to get kind of dragged from area to area as you're working, but um, you won't tend to kind of get as good finish on those focal areas if you if you work that way. So try to just kind of keep yourself focused on one one sort of area, one task. 
Um, you always have the opportunity to kind of go back over things. So, um, you know, even these like little connecting sections, like what I'm working on now, um, we'll be going back to those later on in the piece. Um, I want a little bit more, again, a little bit more greenishness, so sometimes I'm just missing that green quality that the original has, sort of slightly coolish green in the shadows. Um, it makes for a very complex set of colours that, because you get this sort of play between greens and reds and kind of warms and cools. let that smudge out slightly. Um, yeah, so we'll go back up to this face. Now we'll probably end up working kind of back and forth a bit along that jaw anyway, but um, just gives us a slightly better sort of platform to work from now. We've again got this sort of play between cool and warm around the, the brow. The brow sort of wraps down into the half tones. Across into the forehead here. So I'm just trying to find lay in those portions and then also get them to transition into the to warmer tones.
you can see just making these really gradual adjustments developing these forms There's a fairly sort of subtle expression as well going on here, so that's something that again it's going to take time to kind of work through, develop all these tones, um, and get that stuff to work. That's just the nature of this type of rendering. I, I wanted to do sort of a lesson like this where it's, you know, we're not sort of boshing it out super quickly, but looking at how long it can take to just make these kind of minor adjustments, these sorts of passes over. And sort of circling the right tones and the right transitions just to capture exactly what, what we're going for. It's a little bit more of a glaze now, so I'm glazing a little bit of sort of yellow over this left hand side. doing further glazes in later sessions as well.
probably a little bit too low chroma. So it just makes a little bit of cad yellow into that lighter tone. Just try to brighten it up a little bit.
I have to keep most of the transitions pretty soft at the moment. Um, partly because we're still kind of searching out these smaller forms, their positioning and so on. Um, and generally it does have like a kind of softish quality to it, the whole painting. As a general rule, it's not too tricky to um, to kind of sharpen something up. It's it's usually harder to kind of go over and soften something. So um, staying kind of soft and then gradually getting more sharp as you're more definite is often a good sort of approach. Trying to introduce a little bit more colour back into these tones, so the form's not too bad now, but it's maybe greyed out slightly too much. Um, so in those areas which I kind of know are have more kind of pink tones, I want to just kind of reintroduce that. And I've got quite a lot of paint on the surface now that it's sort of blending in a little bit more. Um, so it's created this. This is sort of what we're looking for: this surface to work with, blended surface. Keep in mind the planes of the face, but at the same time, uh, sort of adjust and develop the tones. So things like this front plane of the nose is distinct from the side plane, which is brighter. Um, and that side plane could probably do with being having a bit more colour to it as well, but perhaps a bit less pinkish so we can kind of blend a little bit of cad yellow into that
Um, so just about probably there with this this session, been going on a little while. Um, but you can see sort of the why it takes time, and it's going to take several passes as well, just to keep working these tones, just getting everything how we want it. Certain things won't come across quite so well until we're kind of glazing them as well, so that's just the nature of uh, oil paint. It's also one of the kind of nicer things about it when you work with it, um, that you can work this gradually. Yeah, so just about there, I think, for today. Lots more to do, as I say, but certainly it's uh, going to come along a bit, generally. Just smudge some of these things out just a little bit. The tones, I think, probably relative to what's underneath, perhaps feel a little bit greyish, but my inclination is that what I prob what we probably want to do is sort of go, once we go through and work down below as well and kind of cool some of those things out, they'll kind of balance out to this top section. So as it stands, the top section maybe feels a bit cool, but everything's always sort of contextual. So yeah, as those other bits kind of get developed, I think the... The, um, the face will kind of, the tones in the face will start to work a bit better. Um, and it's hard to tell that, but it's, it's going to be kind of like pushing and pulling slightly between the two. Um, but that's my, my sense at the moment.
So, yeah, I think that's going to be it for the day. I could keep probably tweaking it infinitely, but I have to finish the video sometime. Um, but yeah, so you can see sort of how how it's progressed, um, how gradually I was working as well, um, and we'll be kind of carrying on with that that approach um, in sub subsequent sessions. Um, will be maybe a little bit looser when we get to um, some other sections of the painting. So once we're kind of not working around the face, which tends to be the, the sort of focal point of any painting, um, things will probably loosen off a little bit again. Um, but yeah, we'll probably, we'll be spending a reasonable amount of time around the face and then kind of working our way out from there towards the torso and the hands and so on. Um, but yeah, I think that's pretty much it for today. So you can sort of see the see the progression, roughly. Um, and we'll be kind of picking up from from here um, <clears throat> in the next session. Just popping some, dropping the hair down a little bit lower. Um, but I should stop because I've been saying for about 10 minutes that I'm going to finish. Um, but yeah, it sort of gives you an idea of this process um, of refinement, how it's, it's never sort of absolute. You're always kind of tweaking until things settle correctly, um, which is probably the most important thing to take away from this session. So when you're kind of, if you're working on the same piece as me, if you're working on this copy or a different copy, um, always take your time because copies are kind of learning processes. You're trying to get into the mind of the the original painter of the, the piece you're copying, thinking about how they paint things, how they kind of use tone, um, use glazing, use paint application, all those sorts of things. Um, that's really the, the primary concern of a copy. It's not um, not necessarily the finished product, but the what you learn through the process um, of copying um, is what's really crucial. So as always, you can um, follow us on YouTube to get videos from myself, other tutors, interviews um, with students and people who work in different uh, arts-based industries, so like loads of interesting stuff on the YouTube. Um, or you can click the link through to find out about courses and qualifications offered by, by OCAD as well. Um, but yeah, that's it for today. Um, we'll be working on this more next week. Um, but until then, I'll see you guys soon.